What's up? I'm Britt Burton and you're watching Beta Records TV and today I'm here with Frank Turner who recently released his third album, Poetry of the Deed. Frank, thanks so much for stopping uh, by. Thanks for having me. It's very nice to be here. Well, obviously this is your third album. So how have you evolved from, you know, <laughs> earlier two albums? I got better. Uh, that sounds like a sort of crass thing to say, but it's actually the truth. I just kind of, I think practice makes perfect and I know I'm better able to kind of express myself now because I don't have to spend ages trying to wonder what chord it is I want to hear at a certain point in the song because I've played them all. <laughs> and now you know the chords. <laughs> now I know every chord there is. And your sound has definitely matured because you used to have kind of a harder kind of punk thing. Yeah, no, I used to be in a, in a band. We, set, we kind of wanted to be the new Black Flag. We weren't but we wanted to be. Um, and I used to kind of take my shirt off and roll around on the floor and scream and fight the front row uh, and jump off things and all that kind of thing. I actually, I broke my kneecap once uh, halfway through a gig. Oh my, did I, you keep going? I or? finished the tour, in fact, not just the gig, but the oh tour. Oh my God. Yeah. You've had a lot of success. You know, you had the single of the week on iTunes. Mm -hmm. What was it like having the single of the week and seeing your song up on iTunes? Oh, it was very cool, actually. The way I'm a success is when things happen that I used to kind of watch bands that I love do when I was a kid. So like playing at certain venues um, or things like that. That's the kind of stuff where I have to kind of stop and have a sit down and be like, whoa. Um, you know, there's a few, there's a, I keep having to write down what my kind of, ideal I'll never get their venue in London is because I keep playing the one that I had on there before, which is a really good feeling. What's next for you? You're obviously promoting your new album. I'm on tour for the rest of my life, basically. Um, I mean, I've got no days off between now and Christmas. I mean, there are, there are travel days and there are rehearsal days, but I don't have any, like, to myself days between now and Christmas. And tomorrow I'm going to have a meeting in which I settle my life between January and about September. So what's it like having your life kind of, I mean, it is kind of planned, even though you yeah. don't really know what's going to happen. On Other date. people know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you have like a rough outline. Uh, you know, I wanted to be a musician since I was a little kid, and, uh, and I wanted to be a Tory musician, and it's all, I'm very much a slap bang in the middle of dream come to territory right now. So. so when you do get a second just to breathe and relax, what do you do to unwind? Uh, eating pizza in the bath. Is a, is a, in is the a, bath? In the bath, yeah. Uh, because that's a combination of decadence. Which are, and the thing is, you never get to have a bath on tour because you, know, you get right. showers or whatever. So having a pizza in the bath is a, is a, it's kind of just so many different. And you, know, and you get a little stereo and you listen to, I don't know, Towns Van Zandt or something. There are kind of creature comforts that you miss initially, but I've been, I did my first tour 11 years ago now, uh, and I've been touring pretty constantly for about five years. So. What's the longest stint that you've ever had out on the road? I did about 18 months once. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How do you even do that? Uh, I did it on the train, actually, as well. I had a, and I was playing to like no people every day. That was, that was actually that was a really tough time, but it was kind of, because I was new to playing this kind of music, I really feel like I learned everything that I know about it by just going out and playing every day for ages and ages and ages. And the shows were generally started out terrible with no people and sort of ended up quite good with some people. So it worked. Now I heard about your music video where you went to 24 house parties in 24 hours, which I thought was awesome. Because I mean, I would like to do that. <laughs> I, I thought it was awesome until about halfway through. And you were like, no. <laughs> that was the worst So idea. how did you come up with this idea in and then you, pull it off. Well, you know when you sometimes have a conversation that's like stupid one-up shit, why don't we do this, why don't we do this? I was sat with Adam, who's a director, and you know, we said, why don't we do a, a video that's kind of about touring? Or why don't we do a video that has like a, a bunch of different shows? It's one way or another, it came out, somebody blurted it out, 24 shows in 24 hours. Actually organizing the logistics of it was really easy, and the first half was fine. And I was like, it's it's easy. And we went from 8 p.m. till 8 p.m., so when it got to about midday, I, my life was over. We, we, we burned through. And actually, the, the last few shows were really good fun because all kind of normality and sense had gone out of the window. Is there any times that fans come up to you after and they're like, oh my gosh, that was so amazing? Yeah, people, people come and say hi. But it, see, I don't really believe in the word fan. I think that's a bad word because, because it implies that the people who make music and the people who listen to music are kind of almost like sort of different social classes. The minute that, pe that musicians hold themselves above their audience, I'm completely not interested in what they have to say. So I always keep a small bag full of clothes carefully stored Somewhere secret, somewhere safe and somewhere close to the door